to start off with, I'd, I'd like to ask a question about GIC in particular to the, the topic of our conversation about public-private partnerships in cities. So GIC has extensive experience investing outside of Singapore in projects and in cities. It seems like the time frame of the investment, the characteristics of the cities must matter a lot. Can you tell us a little bit about how GIC approaches its investments in cities? Uh, yes, I, I think indeed uh, time horizon and characteristics of the cities matter a lot. Uh, in GIC, real estate, we approach our investment with a long-term horizon. Uh, and that's primarily because the nature of our funds are long-term. Uh, and obviously, as a manager uh, of our clients' funds, uh, we, look to, uh, we look to harvest a long-term return uh, and our mandate specifically is uh, to harvest a long-term return uh, that is above global inflation. Um, and so if you, if you look at it from that perspective, for our investments uh, around the world globally in real estate, we have gravitated towards major cities uh, and also to cities that are on a growth trajectory. Part of the reason why we gravitate towards major cities is really that uh, these cities would typically have a, a critical mass and with mass come depth of market, which is important if you think about value protection in the long term. Um, and so given that returns are critical for investors like ourselves, it is important to focus over time, not just on a mass, but also the growth trajectory because that can typically lead to a virtuous cycle of returns, growth, uh, success of the city. Um, so that's how we typically look at it. And as we look at that, therefore, uh, the things that we typically consider in addition to mass uh, are really, um, secondly, the uh, 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 infrastructure in the city. That's typically quite important. Uh, with mass comes its own issues, and one of those issues can often be congestion as well as overcrowding. And if you do not have adequate infrastructure, uh, and to a large extent, seamless infrastructure and planning, over time, um, it can be an issue. So we always look at uh, cities that have got a good infrastructure as well as a good system of continually upgrading their infrastructure. These are actually uh, very critical for us um, because if we were to make our investment based on the long-term horizon, uh, how they perform over time uh, is important. And I think if, if one kind of thinks about infrastructure, uh, sometimes it need not be a zero-sum game in the sense that uh, if you look at a couple of examples around the world, one is this very bay that this property sits on, the Marina Bay. If you think about it, the value that the infrastructure that's been put in place, the value that it extracts, must certainly far outweigh the direct value of the real estate around it. Um, and all over the world, again and again, we see uh, examples of this where if you put certain infrastructure in place, it actually creates a lot more value for the city than one can ever imagine. Another example is, is New York City uh, and the island of Manhattan. If you think about it, the Central Park is a huge piece of real estate, very valuable, but as a park, it provides that breathing space for the dense population and I, I think it adds so much to the city over the long term. Uh, and, and, and the most recent example in New York City is really the High Line. Um, disused railway track converted into a park and instantly you have the rejuvenation of an entire portion of that city, much more uh, than the cost of, of putting in that infrastructure. Um, the third thing that we look at quite consciously is whether these cities have um, 
transparent as well as good regulation. Uh, again, in a lot of our business, this is a key differentiator for us. And last but not least, obviously, we look at, given that uh, our time horizon is long term, increasingly we look at sustainability. It is becoming an, an important issue, and I think it is much more important if one's focus is large cities, and in our case, that usually is the case. Um, so in this respect, from our perspective in all those direct commercial real estate that we control, we've begun a program over the last five years of making sure that they are sustainable in one way or another. We've uh, started getting um, uh, certification from various uh, certification agencies on the sustainability of those uh, real estate. Um, so those, those are the kind of things that we think about and we look at as we think about investing in cities.